So once we finish up Mount St. Helens and we really kind of established that there were catastrophes, really the question became as to where do you go from here? And I think that the biggest issue, if you look at history, the history of the Bible, the biggest catastrophe really that is most monumental is the flood. Mm -hmm. And so the issue we got into is you, some people will say, well, you got to follow creation linearly, you know, Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then go forward. But I realized you can't see back through that because the flood has so changed everything. And the flood really is the event that is most visible. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's the, and in some cases, it's the easiest thing for people to see and to demonstrate that there was this major event on the earth. And so you got to be able to look at those layers. And I, I think that's the point. Most people don't realize as it comes out that there's potentially three miles of these sedimentary mm -hmm. layers at any spot in the earth. Now, some parts are they're eroded away. Some parts you've got more of them. But we don't realize that. And they didn't realize this for many years, really into the 19th century. So that's why the Grand Canyon right. is so perfect, because you have the cutting out mm -hmm. of all these layers, and anybody can go walk in and see them right. and see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so that was brought us back with Steve Austin um, to take us to the Grand Canyon. Uh, now, we looked at a lot of things at the Grand Canyon. That desert view was just one of the places we stopped. But I thought that that really the point of the Grand Canyon was to really demonstrate that there had been a global flood. And that all those rock layers that are trying to be explained by a progressive creationist, for instance, or a theistic evolution of long periods of time, are really just a larger example of the catastrophic events at Mount St. Helens. Mm -hmm. um, again, that Rosetta Stone, as you talk right. about, that is used to unlock what's going on in Grand Canyon. And so we went to Grand Canyon. And this wasn't your first time at Grand Canyon. No, no. But my I, first time, it wasn't yours. Yeah, I've been uh, down the Grand Canyon on a raft uh, seven days uh, each time. And we've had the opportunity to stop, uh, take the trips up the side canyons, uh, to look at those layers, to examine those layers. And I also had the privilege to go down the, the canyon with Dr. Snelling. So yes. I had uh, a geologist and, and other folks who were there to help us uh, understand. But to me, you don't need a geologist to look at these layers and to recognize that the standard paradigm that we're, that we're told, um, that the continent sinks, we have a, an ocean fill in, uh, placid ocean, and then over millions of years, uh, material sprinkles down and it begins to form this layer, in some cases, uh, 1,500 feet thick of, of a different material than the one that's before. And then, and then the continent rises, that sedimentary layer hardens over millions in, of years. Then we have another sinking, placid ocean, more material. So up and down, I think, uh, I think it was Dr. Austin who was saying that uh, the 17 Yeah, he was saying 17 times. It all depends on your view of, of the regression, right. transgression cycle. But. But, uh, that is the standard uh, paradigm in terms of how those layers are formed. And yet when you look at those, and they're exposed there for us in, in the canyon, you have to look at those and recognize this doesn't make sense. The paradigm doesn't make sense to what I'm seeing. And uh, we pointed out one in the film was if you look at the top layer, they say, okay, let's just look at the top layer. And, and you look at how deformed it is, and it is deformed as a result of what we all know happens uh, when uh, the ground is exposed to rain and wind and floods and, and all the things that, that cause uh, the ground to be eroded and, and so forth. It's a drastic, drastic uh, erosion process we see on the top, but we do not see it in these layers. So the, the one piece of evidence we were talking about is if that layer has been exposed for millions of years, we should see that layer cut away like we see the top, but we do not. And we see all of those layers exactly the same way we see the layers in Mount St. Helens. No, I, I think that that is it. And I think as we take these away, it's important. Because even, I mean, it's worth looking. I got this from Steve Austin's book. I read his book, Monument to Catastrophe. Mm. It's very good. And he begins to talk about, because the challenge with geology is the need to simplify, and every geologist will say, but, well, there's this, or but, well, there's that. And so I think that's the thing, is that when we've talked about the pancakes and the major layers, these are simplifications. They're true simplifications, that we're not the only ones making them. This goes back to, uh, to Sloss, Lawrence Sloss, and his, his sequences, when he realized there are these huge 
Unconformities. The great unconformity is recognized. You can see Reed Sloss's book on the cratonic underlaying of the North American continent. He discusses this. And they have these major sequences, five of them, that are laid on top. And then when you get to that sixth sequence, the Tejas, it's a basinal one. And it looks different. They're just not running across the entire United States or huge swaths of it. Now, is there some erosion in some of these layers? Well, yes. But that can also be explained by water flow mm -hmm. and tectonic movement. So mm -hmm. what's interesting is they recognize tectonic movements need to get this. And they recognize water flow has to get it. They just put the time. And I think that's the key deal is mechanism. You've got to come back to mechanism and saying, does the mechanism you're presenting, a transgressive, regressive sequence over 540 million years, or even to get to the, let's get it to the Mesozoic, you know, between 540 million years and 65 million years, this going backwards, is it a, does it make sense? And I think that's what you see, is that we looked at the persistence of the layers, and this is what Ager says, these things go forever, and they're very, mm. very pure. When you right. look at them, the Coconino, you look at the Hermit, you look at some of these formations, the red wall, and that limestone's very pure, and yet it's also striated, and you find things, we didn't come into this, but the nautiloid. So you have these right. frozen mm -hmm. fossils, some of them even frozen, one out of seven is frozen Vertical. vertically. That's amazing. So you've got the persistence, the widespread layers, you've got these uh, fossils in them, and then you've got the lack, we, we didn't come out as much, the bioturbation. You don't have animals digging mm -hmm. down into them. You have, again, evidence inside them of water movement. It's just over and over again. And so I know people will come out and say, well, you know, geologists will point. Say, I, I don't think, let's look at this or let's look at that. And I don't think it shows that. What we're saying is that you look at the hole, there's very usually an instance where that little point very well, we may not understand exactly how it happened, but it may have happened not in the way that one thinks, just as like at Mount St. Helens, you had ice fill in and mm -hmm. all of a sudden explode and created <laughs> mm -hmm. some very curious form, which made a day be formed by one thing under uniformitarian views, but not something else entirely catastrophically. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big deal here is when you start looking at that big picture, and that's what Grand Canyon does, is it shows you the inside story to the right. ground beneath our feet, as uh, mm -hmm. Steve Austin himself yep. says. Mm -hmm. And that's the takeaway there, yep. is that something massive happened. There are these massive layers of mega sequences that sit one on top of the other. And as a one reviewer, I think it was Doug Wilson, said, these are photographs of the flood. Mm -hmm. These are snapshots mm -hmm. of a global flood. And there's really no legitimately good reason. Because when you start examining the mechanism, the veil mechanism, or of, in terms of the regression and transgressive sequences, how did this happen? Why did the continents rise? Why did it fall down? Why did it, it becomes more and more difficult to see how that mechanism would work, much as many of the evolutionary mechanisms become, the credulity begins to be strained when you hear how the mechanism is supposed to explain all the data. Yeah. And so, yes, I, yeah. that was the point of the Grand Canyon was to demonstrate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. To me, the, 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 the thing that happened to me in the Grand Canyon, it wasn't just uh, during the filming, uh, but it, was, it also occurred on my uh, float trips down the Grand Canyon, was to sit back and, and recognize that what Peter is talking about, when, when he references how God destroyed the world that was. Yep. And what's interesting when he calls it the world that was, and the implication is that the world that is today is radically different than what we had before. And, and again, we, we talked about the injustice we do to our children uh, when, we, when we sing the little nursery rhymes about the rain came down, the flood came up, implying that you know what happened is we just had this this soaking of the earth as opposed to helping him recognize that the earth was destroyed, the crust was pulverized. But Peter, in, the, in this passage, is talking about the judgment of God when he destroyed the world with a flood. And he's putting it in the context of scoffers who willingly unnoticed, which means, uh, and that Greek there, it means they uh, willingly uh, do not notice what is noticeable. I think and, that's right, and, yeah. And you go to Cape Town, South Africa, you see Table Mountain, you go to Israel, you go to, to Wyoming, you see the layers everywhere. And so that everywhere you go in the world, it is noticeable the, the destruction and the judgment of God, which is, it's an overwhelming thing. And it overwhelmed me in the, in the, in the canyon to look and to, and to think uh, 
about the power of God and the judgment of God that destroyed everything, Peter's point is that if you unnotice that, then you will not recognize that God will judge again in the future, that he is going to bring fire and will destroy the world again in the future. That is a huge uh, presentation of the holiness of God and the judgment of God when it comes to sin. And so if we put a tarp over it and we ignore that and we say, well, that's just the result of a long series of millions of years of slow processes, then what we do is we are willingly unnoticing this is the evidence of a holy God who judged a very sinful and violent world. No, I think so. And I think that's what you really we get into is we had to establish the flood. And I think that's what that section was for. So we establish <coughs> catastrophe and that, a rapid change. We established that there was a global flood that rapidly changed the earth. And I think we didn't talk about it as much. The regression of the waters totally transformed the face of the surface. And so right. where that flood, post-flood boundary is, is a point of contention, even yes. within creation. Right. Some people will say, well, that Grand Canyon, I mean, Steve Austin would very much put that flood, post-flood boundary somewhere between the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic, which is way up here. Other people put it higher. And this is a point, uh, John Baumgartner, I was talking to him, he said, oh, I think it's higher than this. Um, and this is a point of contention where they're not sure mm -hmm. because of the variety of evidence. And I think that that goes back to this idea that we're not, the flood was really complex and that we still haven't quite understood all of it and may not for some years to come mm -hmm. because there's so many moving pieces that are so unlike what we know today and the world that then was we don't know what it was like. So this is hard to put together, but the big picture very much leads one and you can reasonably hold to that.